just talk about the acquisition of Quinn McCord and why you went after him? <laughs> uh, As opposed to another receiver. Well, uh, well, you all know what happened to Fred Stamps. Okay? So uh, he had surgery. Um, and uh, I think it happened uh, right after our, our day three. So basically, we were shorthanded as far as receivers are concerned. Because uh, um, we all know that Jason Tucker's not playing this one. And TJ Dacre's a little bit beat up right now. We expect them probably to play uh, tomorrow. So basically, I, we have a ready list uh, by position. I have a board which is a ready list by position, and uh, his name was up there. And uh, I made a couple of phone calls, called up uh, Doug Berry in Winnipeg, and asked him what he thought of him. And he was also someone that we were pursuing during the offseason. We just couldn't get uh, him to sign a contract at that point in time. And um, you know, Doug uh, highly recommended him to me, and I got on the phone with Paul Jones. I think it must have been about uh, eight thirty. Uh, on day three, uh, which was 10.30 in Atlanta, and uh, we had a contract worked out, and then we had him on a flight the next morning at about 7. What do you expect out of him, or what do you tell him? Uh, you know, obviously go play, but I mean, he hasn't hardly spent any time with you, so. Well, it's been pretty interesting, because he, he got in, he passed his medical, which was pretty good. Uh, and then he spent some time with Jacques Chatelain, going through some of the formations. Uh, got home, woke up, but this morning we had him on the field, just him and Jock, just lining up and, and going through some routes. Uh, then we had a team meeting and we went back out for a walkthrough. We had an extended walkthrough with our offense for about a half hour. So he got, a, he got another uh, introduction as far as, you know, uh, the formations are concerned and some of the plays that go with it. We just, ex we just you know, threw about 25% of our playbook at him and that's all we expect him to execute come, uh, come tomorrow. And uh, we have another team meeting tomorrow, so which we split up in O and D, offense and defense, and that'll be another half hour session with them. And uh, we line up and play. So he'll be on the field for a limited number of snaps then? Yeah, we got to do it that way, Dan. I think if we just throw the whole playbook at him, he may even forget, you know, what time the bus leaves for McMahon. So we just want to throw about 25% of our playbook at him right now. There are so many uh, first Labor Day first timers on both teams. Uh, how much of a factor will it be to which group adapts best to the scene out there? Well, I don't think the scene's a big deal, really, because some of these guys, whether it's uh, even like guys like Lenny Williams and Chris Thompson, you know, clearly they don't understand what the Labor Day Classic's all about. There's going to be 35,000 people here. Well, but these are guys that played in the NFL. These are guys that played for some big colleges, you know, that have played against, you know, uh, institutions like Notre Dame in Tennessee, where there's 107,000 that come out to games. So, I don't think that type of environment will do anything to them come tomorrow. I think they, they understand that they, they don't understand the history behind it, which is understandable. But uh, I don't think the environment will instill uh, any fear in any of these guys. What do you, what do you tell a first timer? Shit happens in this game. There's always incidents. <laughs> they spell that. I think the less they know, really, uh, Terry, I think the better off they are. Because if you start rehashing all the, what you just mentioned, uh, Thank you. They'll, they'll start wondering where they at and, and how do they play football up here. But uh, having said that, they, they just got to go out and play. And the less they know, the better off they are, and, or I think we are. Given, given the nature of the game, what's your philosophy? Do you just want them to say, hey, guys, we need another win, it's another game, or this is special, treat it special, make it special? How, what's your philosophy? Well, I, I, again, uh, I understand it's a Labor Day Classic, but I don't approach this one any different than I approach the other ones and the ones that are going to be following. This is a football game that we're going to line up with in, and we want to compete, and we want to win a football game. This is, it ain't special to me. I mean, I want to win this football game. Next Friday, I want to win that football game, too. Then Montreal comes to town, I want to win that football game. I guess the, uh, the fact that I've been given this opportunity to coach and some of these guys that play this game is special. And I don't think one game makes it special. I think you got to be careful when you get caught up. You know, also, you're going to get caught up in something that you don't want to cut up in. How do you get your guys to control emotions and basically don't buy into the 
don't we add talent and tell you to push and shove it? Well, well, that's something that we talked about this week. I told the guys, I said, if you were, let your pads do the talking. They said, well, just don't talk. Out. Just let your pads do the talking. And uh, physically, let's take it to them. Uh, clearly, there, there's going to be some extracurricular activity. There, there usually is when these two teams meet. Uh, but, you know, be strong enough to walk away and just let your pads do the talking. So I think they, had, you know, they understand where I'm coming from. Uh, with that, and then uh, after everything that they've just witnessed here over the last little while with the AJ, uh, you know, incident and you know, going back and forth, is he going to be suspended or not suspended? I think they all understand that they don't want to get caught up in that fiasco again. Do you ever deal with that with the players? It, Terry's right. This game has got the weirdest things happening. It. How do you keep the guys at a level, emotional playing field? so they don't get too high on the great things and too low on the weird, really weird things. How tough is that? Well, it's extremely difficult, and that's why we ask them to play every single play as if it's their last. And if they have, we happen to score, don't get caught up in it. And if you get beat for a touchdown, well, it's not the end of the world. Think about the next play. But basically, on a football team like ours, I think I turn to guys like AJ and a few of our veterans to settle down some of the troops out there when it does get a little bit, you know, when it, when it gets a little bit interesting at times out there. But these are the guys that I'm turning to, and that's why I'm expecting some of that leadership to, to, to step forward and, uh, and take the control of the troops out there. Danny, through all the injuries you've uh, suffered with your receiving core, how much of a calming influence has come on Peterson been? He's been outstanding. He's been outstanding. I mean, he's been one of the, the top four or five receivers in the CFL, I think, this year, and he's been he's been great for us. Uh, and so have the other guys like Trevor Gaylor and. And Andrew uh, Nowacki, um, and we, you know, like I keep on telling the guys, you know, we're excited about the 42 that we're going to line up with, and we expect to do great things uh, every time we line up with them. And uh, taking that into consideration, if we can get some other people back here along the way, which we're going to get Thomas Key Bell back, but uh, I'm looking forward to hopefully having a guy like Jason Tucker in the lineup next week, and hopefully feel the same lineup for a couple of weeks in a row. That'll be exciting. But, I mean, uh, the guys come out to work, and they've worked hard, and, and uh, a lot of the other guys have picked it up for, uh, for some of the guys that have not been in the lineup, and I'm quite happy with the performance today. Can you expect, can you expect Dan to make a huge impact right out of the gate in a game mm -hmm. like this, Thomas Key? Well, uh, I would think so. I mean, uh, I think he's probably the best guard in the CFL, and, uh, and he brings some nastiness, and... Uh, I'm sure the Calgary Stampeders would prefer playing someone else than Dan Comiskey from to come tomorrow afternoon. So uh, he'll help us, and he's played in a few of these, so he knows what these these games are all about. So he'll bring that calming presence, I think, to the offensive line when we're on the bench or even when we're on the uh, in the huddle, and we break that hole and we get into the line of scrimmage.